This is the perfect example of why things aren't quite as good as they seem online. This C63 was in a state when I first bought it. <laughs> well, it still is, but at least we've been making progress with it. At least that's what I thought. Can you remember when I first picked this thing up and both passenger side and driver side windows were completely smashed? Now, I did replace both of the windows, thinking that I got most of the glass out of the door, but listen to this. Oh! I don't think I got it all. At least the exhaust kind of muffles the sound of the window a bit. But it's not the sound of the window, the bodywork, or the fact that the fan constantly runs when the car is running that's worrying me. This is what's worrying me. Now I've came so far with this car, physically, mentally and financially just to give up now. The C63 has exceeded any type of budget that I had planned for this thing, so now I'm building this car just out of straight passion. Now my goal in the last video was to eliminate all the dashboard warning lights. But that seems to be a lot easier said than done. We have got an airbag light on, an ABS light on, a traction control light on, and well, a fuel light. So before I quite literally deep dive into this fluid leak that I seem to be having, which may require us to take out the engine, which I've never done before, let's start trying to get rid of these lights on the dash. Now the main reason for the airbag light being on is the driver's side front seatbelt is missing. After replacing all the airbags in the car and the rear seatbelts, I thought I'd covered everything, but it seems like we're getting a fault from the driver's side front seatbelt. Usually seatbelts lock out in an accident, but the front seatbelt seemed to be fine, but still it's bringing up a fault. So I went ahead and bought a second hand one off eBay, and we're just installing it now in hopes that that will bring the airbag light off the dashboard. Now potentially, we could have failed at the first hurdle here. So now we have the driver's side seatbelt installed, but more than likely when you have a fault with the driver's side seatbelt, you have a fault with the passenger side seatbelt. Although a fault code didn't come up for the passenger side the last time I scanned it, but let's find out. But now, yes, we do have one for the passenger side front seatbelt as well. So looks like we're gonna have to buy one of them. And there is a brand new second hand seatbelt, $24.99. They're interchangeable of the C-Class and the C63, so not bad deal at all. Now this is the part I've been absolutely dreading since we filmed the last video. Now a lot of the other faults on this car are all related to the ABS and traction control. And as we learned in the last video, which is in the top right hand corner, the traction control is actually controlled by four wheel speed sensors on each corner of the car. Now the diagnostic tool was telling us we was getting a fault coming from the wheel speed sensor on the front passenger side. So like you do, I bought a wheel speed sensor, I replaced it, but I was still getting that fault as you can see. And it actually turns out it's it's an electrical fault and the wire from the wheel speed sensor to this ABS control module has a break in it. And that wire that's got a break in it is right down the back there. I have absolutely no idea how I'm gonna get to this, but I can only attempt. So this was the start of a nightmare. I have no idea how this wire has broken, but I've got no other choice but to fix it. And as I was fishing down there, I seem to have found the remaining part of it. It looks like I'm gonna have to uninstall this black battery transfer box that we reinstalled in the last video. And then we just about had access to the broken ABS wiring. Now I couldn't seem to find out where it actually broke from the loom, but I know that the wire rooted from the wheel speed sensor and then ended up in this ABS control module here. In the ABS loom, I managed to find the two same colored wires, the red and green one and the blue and green one. And because I couldn't find the end where it broke from, it looks like we snipped it from this end and then guiding two new wires from the wheel speed sensor directly into that loom. I only had a black and red cable to hand, but for now they're gonna be identified as blue and green cables and red and green cables. Then I've got to route the new black and red wires from the wheel speed sensor to the ABS module and then splice them in. I've got Liam doing the 
old splicing dies as he is an electrician so I thought it'd be best for the job. And yes, moan all you like in the comment section but we're going to have to use these connectors because one, that's all we had to hand at the time and two, try getting a soldering iron in those small gaps. But now we have the two new wires connected at the front of the ABS module, it's time to connect them up to the wheel speed sensor which comes out just underneath the wheel well. And with that connected, we can put everything back together which is one hell of a fiddly job. And I really, really hope that this works because this was so time consuming and fiddly, definitely do not want to be touching that again. I cannot even explain how long that actually took. That was literally nearly a full day job and I'm absolutely sick of looking at wires now. I, I just hope that that works. I'm almost dreading to put the key in the ignition now, but we're gonna try, try the diagnostic tool first. Maybe we have to drive it around the block to see if the wheel speed sensor picks up a signal, but there's only one way to find out. First thing I'm gonna try is actually just to start it to see if the lights go off and then I'll plug the code reader in. Okay. Oh! Yes! Wait, I didn't even have to put the code reader in. It's a winner. It worked. It worked. Yeah, I didn't even have to put the code reader in. No lights on the dash apart from those ones, but no more lights. Hang on, hang on. There's not even an airbag light on the dash and that... What? What has happened? <laughs> has everything been fixed? For so I don't know why there's no... Why has the airbag light gone off? Things to make you go... So just to confirm that everything was actually fixed, I took the car out in the car park just to give it a little drive around just to see if any lights appeared back on the dash. And good news, they didn't. And do you know what else is good news? I bought another car. You didn't. I did. Oh no. Do you know what else I did? What? I built a website using Squarespace who have sponsored today's video. Now Squarespace do everything from websites to online stores to marketing tools and analytics. It really is the only one platform to build and run your business. I have a VA and you have one too, but building a website is easy to do. You go to Squarespace, there's loads of templates. No, really, I'm going to stop now. <laughs> okay, but yes, it is really easy to build a website using Squarespace. Once you have picked your template, you can then go in and drag and drop your own photos in there, your own logos in there, your own text. And before you know it, you have your own customized website. And you can also see what it looked like on a mobile screen as well as a desktop. There's so much more to dive into, like the commerce stuff as well, but I'm sure we'll cover that in another video. <laughs> so when you need a website, go to squarespace.com or just click the link in the description box below. And when you're ready to launch, use code Matt Armstrong, and that's gonna get you 10% off your first website or domain name. Thanks Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Back to the C63. So literally that wire being broke seems to have caused a lot more problems than we originally thought. So we now literally have no lights on the dashboard, but I think the airbag light may have gone off because I've left the battery disconnected for a long time. And even this seat belt, which we will replace anyway, because I think we did have a fault. The tensioner is working in it. Check it out. Look at that. So it, it is all working. I, I, I honestly, I have no idea. So maybe by leaving the battery disconnected for a while after replacing the seat belts and all the airbags, it's allowed the ECU to sort of reset itself, which sort of gives me an idea with the Range Rover. We'll see whether that worked at the end of the video. But we now move on to the part that was kind of worrying me. So the C63 was almost ready for its MOT test and then once that's passed, we can go to the body shop and get it painted. But this oil leak and multiple leaks is going to slow us down a fair bit. So one leak which is fixable and very minor is coming from the power steering fluid and it's just where these connect into the actual rack there. But I think that would just be an O-ring that we need to replace and that's quite a, well it's quite an easy fix. We can do that, no problem. It's the actual oil leak that's worrying me. So we could kind of see from the last video that the oil leak was coming somewhere in the region of just above the sump here. We've got like the main sort of sump pan, the lower sump pan here, and then like the actual sump, but it seems like it's coming 
just there near the starter motor. Now, I've been speaking to some people who know the C63 engine inside out, and apparently a fairly common problem on these is that after a while, the oil will start leaking from the upper sump pan. The issue is though, to fix the oil leak coming from the upper sump, it is an engine out job. You literally can't get to it with the engine in. Well, you probably could, but it'd be really, really difficult. Now, some C63 owners just live with the oil leak, but mine, when it's parked up for even just 30 minutes, it seems pretty drastic, so I'm left with no other choice. Now, before I jump to conclusions, I wanted to remove the starter motor just to see if I could get a better look at where the oil leak was actually coming from. And it looked to be good news. I think we might just have got away with it. This still work, but I don't think the engine has to come out. So just up here, you can see it's wet here, but after removing the starter motor, I can't quite pull it all the way out. I can see it's very, very difficult for you guys to see, but just at the top there, the actual top, which is the engine out job, it's pretty dry, it just seems wet around this sort of sump here, not the top one, which I think this section here is the part, oh, this section here is the part that's leaking from there. So it, I think we should be able to get all of this down without taking the engine out. We do have to take the subframe down, but I think if we can just drop that down and then um, seal it all back up, we should be able to do it. We may have to pull the gearbox out of the way, but let's get to it and find out. <laughs> So yet again, we're at it with taking the whole front subframe down. And hopefully this time will be the last and final time that we ever do it. With the under tray out of the way, I can get a better look at the power steering fluid leak. I've got to remove the power steering rack anyway to get the subframe down, so we might as well start with that. First off, I'm going to undo the bolt, which connects the rack to the steering column, and then I can lower it down a bit and access where that leak is coming from. And just as I thought, it seems to be a dodgy O-ring. So off with the old one, and on goes a new O-ring. And we can pop that all back together, and fingers crossed, that should solve the power steering fluid leak. Now, as I mentioned, the rack has to come off anyway, so I'm going to start undoing the track rod ends each side. Love it that you play in a new band. Yeah. Do you even have one if you don't? And then there's a few more little bolts here and there, and then I can finally lower the steering rack away from the car. Too scared to get fired. I need this stuff so bad I just wanna Next job I've got to start removing anything that's connected to the front subframe, including the anti-roll bar. And with the anti-roll bar out of the way, it's time for the suspension arms to be removed. I can just remove these from the front subframe and then let them hang from the wheel side of things. And that should give us enough access to lower the front subframe down. There's also two bolts each side for the engine mounts as well, so I can loosen these off. And as the front subframe is actually holding the engine in place, I've got to lower the car down in the ramp and then put this sort of support bar across the top of the engine. And then I can tie this chain around this mounting point here. And then this bar will then support the full engine weight when the engine mounts are removed from the front subframe. So now we can go back underneath the car and start removing all the bolts which hold the front subframe to the actual chassis of the car. And with help from Fabian, I can lower it all down. Okay, front subframe is down, that wasn't so bad, but now we can take a better look at the sump. So we already replaced this part of the sump here because that was damaged in the accident, and also this part of the sump here, but this is the main sump, the big one here, and you can see, well, it's kind of wet around this point, and then also I've noticed the top actually in that area, you can see it's very wet around there. So it looks as if to get this big sump off, I've got to take this small little pan here off and that pan there because I think there'll be some bolts inside here which I won't be able to get to unless I take them off. So I've got to drain the oil out and then we'll go from there. So out comes the oil and then off comes the lowest sump pan and then also the front lower sump pan, if that's what it's called. But as I mentioned, both of these we've already replaced. And now I can access all the bolts, which you can see here, which hold the main sump to the bottom of the engine. There's 
plenty of bolts to undo, so let's get started. Now it's pretty disappointing that this sump is leaking when the car's only done around 50,000 miles. But I guess some cars have a much harder life than others, especially this one. Right, I'm making good progress now. I really, really hope that this works. I do not want to be taking this part again for like the third time now. So now this time we have the complete sump path and we can see pretty much everything. We've got the oil pump with the pickup and return pipe. We can't actually see the bottom of the crankshaft. It's all sort of covered up. But this is where I think the oil leak has been coming from. I think the sort of seal along the top of the sump has been leaking across here and down there. You can sort of just about see it there. There's no actual gasket on the sump. It is just a sealant. So you can see how that will fail over time, especially with the heat that this is going to get. And over here is the sump that we've taken off. This is where I think it was leaking from there. This is all got to be cleaned up and then we've got to put a bit of instant gasket sealant all the way along the bottom and then put it all back together. Now the common fault that I told you about earlier in the video is for this actual case in here to be leaking it and that is sealed up right at the top just about there that's sort of like the upper sum and you can see now why you'd have to take the engine out to do that this um, timing chain would have to come off with the oil pump as well and then also to get it off you've got to be taking the uh, gearbox away from it as well because well you can see the bolts here uh, to get it off and well that would have been an absolute nightmare but fingers crossed we should all be good we're just resealing the sump and putting this thing all back together so to be 100% confident that I'm not going to be doing this job again, I want to make sure the bottom of the engine where the sump meets it is absolutely spotless. And the same goes for the sump. And once it is, I can start applying the sealant. And once the sealant's applied, I can then marry it up to the bottom of the engine and tighten all the bolts for it. And it's the same again for the front lower sump and the rear lower sump, if that's their names. And with all the sumps now connected up, I'm living up to my last name and absolutely bench pressing this front subframe up on my own. <laughs> no, it wasn't really that heavy, it's all aluminium. And then it's just the case of bolting everything back together the way we took it out. With the bottom half of the car pretty much done, I can lower the C63 down and take off the engine support bar before putting the car back up again, tightening up the engine mounts and then popping back on the under tray which supports the steering rack. So the underside of the engine is about as dry as it's ever gonna be. There's no oil in there at the minute. And as soon as I put oil in, if I see any come out, I'm gonna be furious. Everything is all back together. We've just got to add oil, but there is one thing that I do want to change before we drop the car down, and that is this sensor right here. I have a new sensor here, and this thing is an aircon pressure sensor. We're getting a fault from this, and I think this is the reason why the fan is constantly running whilst the car's on. It could be that it's got no aircon gas, which it has but I think on my Audi R8 this was the same reason and once we change this it stopped the fan from running all the time but we'll give it a go simple and easy replacement this one just a case of undoing the old sensor and then screwing in the new one I think the reason why the fan comes on and stays on when the sensor is faulty is because the car has no idea what pressure is in that aircon system so it's just playing it safe and with the new sensor in, I can pop in some fresh new oil, which hopefully doesn't end up on the floor. And we're just about ready to get this car started. Oil in, battery connected. Let's start this thing up. Let's check for leaks. Fingers crossed the fan isn't constantly running, but I haven't got too much hope. I think I may need to regas the aircon to get that off, but we'll, we'll soon find out. Let's start this thing up. Come on, C63. It is your time to shine. Come on. 
come on. I think we need power steering fluid. Yes, we do. No fan either, which is good. I just popped the car in the air just to check for any obvious oil leaks, but all seemed good. So once again I got the car down and finally off the ramp and I thought I'd decide to take it for a drive around the car park just to check everything was all good. Yes! Finally we are getting somewhere with this car. Well it feels like it at least. Only time will tell though. So finally it feels like we're making some progress with the C63 and only time will tell whether all the fluid will stay where it should. But now she's sounding smooth and there's no more aeroplane fan constantly running whilst the car's on. So I guess that leaves us now to concentrate on the bodywork. This is one hell of a project. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up button and I will see you in the next video. Peace out. Has it worked? Da, 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 da. Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs>